the Acoustic Cafe, featuring folk and acoustic musicians from around the country, and with your host, Brad Paul. Tonight, we bring you part of a special series that was recorded at Walden 1120, a radio station in Concord, Massachusetts, and tonight we feature the music of Cheryl Wheeler. Walden was celebrating their first anniversary with an open-air concert, and now, from the summer of 1990, here is Cheryl Wheeler. I'm Brad Paul, and welcome to the Acoustic Cafe. This program is part of a special series we are bringing you from Walden 1120. It's a radio station in Concord, Massachusetts, and they're celebrating their first anniversary with a free outdoor concert. And one of the performers here today is Cheryl Wheeler. Hi. Hi, Cheryl. Who do I look at, you or them? Uh, you can look at me. Good. Yeah, and they'll just look <laughs> on. All right, good. <laughs> well, first I'd like to say thank you for taking a minute out of your time here, because I know well, it's a thanks. lot of great things going on out here as you can hear in the background the noise and the music but right. uh, uh, we'll just make it quick because uh, obviously there's so much great music going on here we all want to get out there and enjoy right. it. Right. I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, some of the recent developments in your career. Let's start off with a video. Now you've got the video of uh, estate sales. That's uh, right, I have two videos now, estate sale mm -hmm. and Aces. All right, mm -hmm. great, great. And you worked with a a production Acme. company down in Nashville. That's right, Acme Pictures. Joanne Gardner is mm -hmm. the, is the uh, woman that I worked with at, there at Acme. She's the, she and um, another woman on the company. And um, it was really fun, it was really great. I was not looking forward to doing a video. I thought it would be horrible, but it was great. I loved it. You made the transition to, uh, to still, or not still camera, but playing to a camera as opposed to playing to the live audience well, without I any trouble? You see, those people are so good at what they do that I didn't have to do. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. I didn't have to make any noticeable transition. I, they told me what to do and made it easy, and I did it. And mm -hmm. Then they showed me a video, and it was like, wow, real video. You yeah, know? it worked. It worked. Yeah. 
they're working with a lot of people that uh, you know aren't to the I don't know the real mainstream commercial end of things. Right. Uh, so that seems like a logical choice that, that uh, mm -hmm. they well, just seem to have a good niche they're, for They have a great name. Kind of a lot of things. Chapin, my, uh, Mary Chapin Carpenter right, was artist one of the people who told me I should look, you know, mm. check Joanne out. So it just worked out great. I would love, I could, you know, make a video of Joanne every day of my life and love it probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How was it to look back uh, at the first one and, and, uh, and see it up there? Was it? Oh, um, oh my God, it's no. television. Uh -uh, no. Yeah. No, it didn't. It's just normal. Mm -hmm. So, what have you been doing this summer? Have you been hitting a lot of the big festivals, uh, or yeah. stay, staying at home and writing more material no, for the I'm next project? I've been out a lot. I've been doing a lot of festivals, a lot of gigs, traveling a lot. I mm -hmm. haven't been home much at all this summer. But it's been a great summer. It's, it seems like it should be over, but it isn't. It's mm -hmm. still hot out. Uh, <laughs> it's um, last couple of weeks I've been kind of. The most of this month of September has been pretty laid back, but mm -hmm. then next I'm going to Kansas next week and Nashville. And I got a gig in Lawrence, Kansas. I don't know what that is. <laughs> well, it's a university there. Is there? Yeah, and a pretty good radio station, K A N U. You have huh. to drop in and say hi to them. When Maybe you're I will. Yeah. So what's uh, what's in the crystal ball for Cheryl Wheeler? Oh, I don't know. Uh, hopefully lunch. <laughs> the first thing in the crystal ball and. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, mm -hmm. uh, I don't I have any big plans for anything now. I'm just, uh, I'm, I, hope, I, mean, I, I think maybe I'm going to write some songs soon. I have a feeling that I am, so I hope so. And mm -hmm. otherwise, who, you know, I don't know. Taking it day to day. That, oh, day to day. Is that the hour way the, hour. the career has, has come along so far? Has it been pretty much, uh, well, let's just try this and see if it works, as opposed yes. to sort of, you know, thinking of a long term oh, plan no, or anything? Oh, no, let's try this and see if it works. Mm -hmm. You know? And Let's so far, things seem to have been working yeah, pretty so well. Yeah, so far, yeah. I'm very lucky. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy with it. Is there anything, uh, any particular uh, uh, change in the career that you could point to or a moment uh, that was helpful in, in building the career that you could point to that stands out among the others? Yeah, I think Dan Seals singing Addicted and having it go to number one was a huge difference for mm -hmm. me. That has everything to do with getting a... You know, getting the deal with capital and everything. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're a songwriter, as you are, and somebody makes a recording of your song, as as Dan Seals did, how do you how do you perceive that initially? Is it is it like are you protective about your songs at first? No, huh? Or are you really glad to see that somebody yeah. has the interest in your yeah. in your art to uh, to make a recording? You of bet. It? I'm thrilled mm -hmm. about it. I'm not. It's my song's not a thing you have to protect. I mean, nobody's going to ever change the way it is for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So. I was thrilled when Dan sang Addicted, and I was thrilled. I was really delighted when I heard he was going to do it, and when I heard the recording of it, I was really impressed. That's a hard song to sing. He sings it so well. Mm -hmm. And then it opened up some new doors for oh, you. Oh yeah, yeah, I'd say. Mm -hmm. I mean, night and day. You could all of a sudden get a song that was a number one song. And that. Uh I would assume that the money that's generated for you as as the writer of that song would also enable you to uh, to free up some time to be to well, work look more in the creative. Nice clothes. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty obvious. But uh, you know what I'm I saying? You're not you're not consumed with the day to day putting bread on the table. That uh, well, I was it never gives consumed you with that, so. gives you a little bit of leeway. It's nice to have some more money, but I was never consumed with. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I never worried much about money, and I don't know, I just never did. But mm -hmm. it certainly is nice to have more of it. I had more of it, and it's all spent now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back to day to day, that, and I'm on fine. On that huge uh, Cheryl Wheeler wardrobe, right? That's right, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Right. Hey, t-shirts are expensive these Three days. Three closet fulls, oh, right. wall-length closets. I yeah. got five new t-shirts this summer. Hey, well. That, that runs into money. That, that probably ate up all your royalties Absolutely, right there, right? Absolutely, man, hey. But <laughs> got to do it. you got to look the part. You that's know? right. you got to look the part of the staff. That's right. Yeah. Well, Cheryl, I want to thank you for coming by again well, and taking you. some time out of the, your busy day here to uh, share with our audience here on the Acoustic Cafe. I'm glad you did it. Thank you all very much. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. We'll be back with more of Cheryl Wheeler's performance here on the Acoustic Cafe right after this. The animals in the forest say they might say 
Be careful with fire in the forest. Just like Smokey says, only you can prevent forest fires. It's time for You Lost Your Life with your host, Christ Dummies, Vince and Larry. Hi! Hello, <laughs> and, and welcome to the show that proves if you don't buckle your safety belt, the loser is you. That's right, Vince, and by not buckling up, you could end up in places you never dreamed. Like traction! Or the emergency room! Plus, Larry, if you're not buckled up, you could maybe take a ride in a beauty like this. Stay tuned! You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. lousy weather, don't you? <laughs> anyway, hi, how are you? <laughs> Thank you very much and good night. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> I'll, uh, I have, as, I, as I said, I do have a new album out. It's called Paula Abdul. Have you heard it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a new song I wrote. I wrote it because I found out that the Yellow Cab Company was formed in the year 1915. In the year of the Yellow Cab, in the shadow of the Great World War, the third kid from had came in. child of changing times growing up between the wars Fords rolled off the line and bars all closed their doors and I imagine you back then with snap brim hats and farmers tan where horses drew their Was the spring house dark and cold? Did the roosters crow at dawn when they got you up for school? And would you tell me once again the tales of granddad's hired men and how they drove the old dirt road to town? Cause now Just a name. Are you more amazed? 
for my father. Thank you. I, I see my daddy's in jail, but. <laughs> <laughs> the guitar off a little or something. Or some, I don't know who, who where the monitor person is, but it's very um, boomy up there. <laughs> She was just your size. It's a beautiful frame, and the picture's all right. Salt and pepper airplanes, and that deco light. Wonderful things they have collected. Open the drawers and trunks and closets. Don't leave a corner uninspected. Tonight we we'll so long now it gets in my mouth when I sing and I hate that <laughs> and then when they have these kind of windscreens too the hair gets on that and sticks on the windscreen the whole time you're singing it gets in and out of your mouth the whole time <laughs> and as soon as there's a hair in your mouth you totally are not thinking about the song you are thinking use your tongue as little as possible <laughs> to keep the hair forward because you know sometimes after a song I have to go thank you I think is always attractive on stage, don't you? Hi. <laughs> All right, I've been had a request to do this here ballad, so that's what I'm doing. There is a house, not really. <laughs> I could feel my heart beat right and gaze into some gentle warm excited eyes and give myself as truly as an arrow flies in windless skies. Oh, I remember you in the TV lines holding you close. Thank you. 
the greatest part. Oh, but I remember you in the TV light, holding you close to me where we lay. And now I wish I knew some of those softer nights, whispering quietly, feeling you turn. I wish I could feel my heart beat right and gaze into some gentle warmth inside and I give myself as truly as an arrow flies in windless skies. Ooh, I wish I could fall. Thank you. Thanks. I'm going to sing you a song which I wrote as a result of something I read in Time magazine. And it's a um I it was a it was an article about assault weapons. It, this uh happened right after the Stockton, California thing. And I don't know anything about guns, but I, I'm reading this article, and the article is about different popular machine guns in our society. Now, I had thought that books and movies were popular in our society. <laughs> Apparently, machine guns are. And they told about the different ones that were popular. One of the most popular ones is the um, AR-15, which, according to Time magazine, will shoot 900 rounds a minute. And the NRA says that hunters need them. <laughs> I say, obviously, not very good hunters. Well, I mean, really, you know. I mean, I can understand if, you know, Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles are going hunting, but. <laughs> Otherwise, for God's sake, I don't care what you want me to get. You give me 900 chances in a minute, I'll get it. You know what I mean? You can hunt DNA with this gun. So, of course, the NRA's attitude is very, like, they're like, Oh, for heaven's sakes, it's perfectly normal to have a few machine guns laying around the home. <laughs> it is not. We, we never had a machine gun drawer in our kitchen, did you? <laughs> Mommy, I'm going to take a cookie and a machine gun and go out with Billy. Okay, honey. Uh, and, you know, when I was a kid, I wanted a, a gun. I wanted a BB gun. I asked my father for it, and he explained that he didn't want us to have any guns in our house. And especially now, looking back, seeing how we got along in that family, I can see that, you know, <laughs> It was the right decision. I think I could have just, I think I could have gone maybe just one lima bean too far one night. I could just see me going, you eat them, okay? You eat them. Here, now dance. Uh, well, let's get the kids in the back of the car. Take that vacation we're in waiting for.
Cheryl Wheeler. Feeling you turn to me. I wish I could feel my heart beat right and gaze into some gentle warmth of sight and dark. Give myself as truly as an arrow flies in windless skies. Ooh, I wish I could fly. 